So we got some people going, what is the Hellfire Club? And you know what? I'm so glad that they finally brought this into the TV show because I am so excited to talk about it. The Hellfire Club was originally created for the social elite in England, and they used it to influence the economy and political matters. Think Illuminati, but it's called the Hellfire Club. In the Marvel Universe, the Illuminati is something completely different. After a while, they expanded their ranks to Boston, Hong Kong, London, Los Angeles, New York, Paris, Philadelphia, and San Francisco. The person who's in charge of every single one of these branches was called the Lord Imperial. The members of the Hellfire Club just wanted status, power, the ability to change the world without actually having to get their own hands dirty, you know? Be rich, stay rich, get richer, but not actually, you know, do anything. Make it look good, but it, they were actually being lazy. Most people were born into the membership of the Hellfire Club, but if you were someone of immense status like Tony Stark or Norman Osborn, then you got a special little invitation. The biggest problem with being in the Hellfire Club was that you had to be okay with knowing any one of its members are willing to stab you in the back, take your place, blackmail you, and set you up to die just so they can increase their own status. What most people don't know is that inside of the Hellfire Club is a secret inner circle that is made up of mostly mutants. Sebastian Shaw became the Black King in the inner circle, and he killed a lot of people to get that title after his wife was killed by some people in the Hellfire Club. Emma Frost, a fan favorite, became his White Queen. Shaw used the power of the club to turn his attentions to the X-Men and tried to recruit Jean Grey. And then Jean was manipulated by the mutant mastermind and she turned into the Dark Phoenix. Of course, the Hellfire Club bombed and they were defeated by the X-Men. I mean, come on, obviously they were defeated by the X-Men, it's the X-Men. But that didn't stop them. As a sort of revenge, Jean as the Dark Phoenix drove mastermind insane and it was brutal. Shaw hasn't always been the leader of the inner circle though. At one point, Magneto actually becomes the leader of this little secret group in the Hellfire Club. He teams up with Emma Frost and he tries to kill the Black Queen, Selene. There's always a lot of backstabbing going on. I told you guys this. Funny thing, Magneto actually ends up leaving the Hellfire Club to try and pursue a relationship with Rogue, but he was shut down hard, mostly because he murdered a Savage Land Priestess. Sometime down the road, Shaw actually came back to the Hellfire Club because, you know, you can't keep a crazy mutant down. And he tried to use it as a force for good, I'd use quotation marks, good, helping the mutant Robert DaCosta gain the leadership of the club. Sunspot would eventually become the next Lord Imperial, but we all know that Shaw has ulterior motives, right? Come on, he's a bad guy. The Hellfire Club does more harm than it does good, and at one point spawns the weird variation called the Hellfire Cult. In the beginning, it kind of looks like this whole cult is being run by a mutant named Empath, but it turns out that he was just a patsy. He was just being used because they didn't want them to find the real leader, you know, like a smart evil villain does it. And the real leader of the cult was the Red Queen. Eventually, the X-Men get involved, and we can all guess how long that lasted, right? Not very long, because they're the freaking X-Men. When Cade Kilgore managed to get control of the Hellfire Club, Cade used it to attack the Jean Grey school. And then, Cade also created something called the Hellfire Academy. Now, the Hellfire Academy was supposed to be the competition for the Jean Grey school, right? So if the Jean Grey school is making X-Men, then the Hellfire Academy is making the anti-X-Men, people who are going to join the Brotherhood, and people who are going to go after the X-Men, and, you know, they're going to hate humans, stuff like that. The Academy hired villains to be its faculty and even tried to poach some of the students from the Jean Grey school. They, they have no shame. They have no shame whatsoever. When they attack the school, it's Quentin Quire, a newer mutant, that helps to stop them. Now, Quentin is an incredibly powerful telepath, and he is also a potential Phoenix host. After the attack, Matt Murdock actually serves the Hellfire Academy for the damages because nothing hurts more than losing a battle and then having to pay for what you broke. Daredevil knows how to hit him where it hurts. At some point, Quentin actually joins the Phoenix Corporation, which turns out to own the East Coast branch of the Hellfire Club, and he becomes the new White King. Because he became the new White King, Quentin becomes insanely rich overnight. And he has zero problem flaunting his money in front of everyone's face. I mean, this dude wears the most expensive clothes. He's just a jerk. He's not evil, but he isn't the easiest guy to get along with. He's kind of on the fence, and he could go either way depending on how somebody wanted to write him. He still trains with the X-Men. He still lives at the Jean Grey school. But he has more power than someone his age should have. And no one has tried to steal the rights to the East Coast Hellfire Club from him yet. Yet. Because if anything would happen, Shaw might come back and try to do it. The awesome thing is that the Hellfire Club just showed up in The Gifted and has already shown two mutants in it. The Cuckoo Sisters, crazy clones of Emma Frost, and a new mystery mutant who either has insane strength or some kind of alchemy power, because he made a freaking diamond. It looks like they want to use the Strucker siblings for some reason, and if their history in the comics is used in the show, then you can bet they want to use their power to put mutant kind on top. That's what the Inner Circle always wants to do. They want to help mutant kind, but they really don't care who they have to kill to do it. 
Another use of the Hellfire Club was in the X-Men First Class movie, where Sebastian Shaw tries to cause the Cuban Missile Crisis. He has Emma Frost, the Zazel, and Riptide working for him. He even gets Angel on his side and delivers one of the most heartbreaking scenes in the X-Men series. It broke my heart watching that happen to him. It was so sad. In the comic books, he does come back to life, though. So Shaw tries to use the Hellfire Club to start World War III using the Cuban Missile Crisis. So all of the humans would end up being wiped out, only leaving mutants alive and in control. The funny thing is, is that Magneto ends up killing Shaw and subsequently takes over the Hellfire Club, but he uses the members to form the Brotherhood of Mutants because we know that Magneto doesn't care about the Hellfire Club. We know he is all about that Brotherhood. What do you guys think about the Hellfire Club? What do you guys think is going to happen in the TV show? Do you think we're going to see them show up in the movies again eventually? What do you guys want to see next? And what do you guys think about just Magneto always being involved in everything, man? The Brotherhood, the Hellfire Club, the X-Men. It's crazy. This dude has his toes everywhere. Let me know in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next one.